So now let's go to um, this instruction video and watch it for about two, three minutes. The lesson question is, how is the intersection point? You see, how is the intersection point of two linear functions related to a linear function? Okay, so what type of, what type of um, line is this? You can unmute yourself and respond quickly. Linear. Linear, very good. So now in this linear equation, they established one point at this place and they established another point at, that, at this point. So now when they mean a function, they are basically talking about, um, they, they will first of all have a relationship, they have a formula or an expression, but they are want you to find out the value when X is a certain number, when X is a certain number. For example, for example, let me use the one I created already, the one we created. So this is a function here. This is a function. Y, Y equal to 3X plus 5 is a function. It's a function of F of X. So now for you to get a value of Y, you have to try different values of X in order to get a value of Y. For example, if we want to do F of 1, so that would just be, uh, what is the value of y when x is one? That's what they are talking about. So that is going to be three bracket one plus five. So three times one is, three times one? Three. Then three plus five is? Eight. Eight, very good. So that's the value of y when x is one. So now how about the value of y, um, f of, uh, let's say, f of uh, negative five, f of negative five, okay? So what this thing means, what's the value of y when x is negative five? That's all it is. So what you do directly would be, you just write five, three bracket negative five plus five. So now three times negative five is what? Three times negative five. Hello, unmute yourself and say an answer, respond. Three times negative five is, okay, three times five is what? 15. 15, yes, very good. So, so and three times negative five is gonna be negative 15. So what you do is you just write, you just write to your negative 15 plus five. Negative 15 plus five will give you what? Wait, what was the question? Negative 15 plus five will give you what? Oh, 10. Is it negative 10 or positive 10? Negative. negative. Negative 10, very good. So it should be negative 10. Now look at it this way, look at it this way. If you're owing somebody $15 and you pay the person $5, have you paid everything? Yes or no? Yes, you haven't paid at all. You are still owing $10. That's why you have negative 10, okay? So this is what function is about. So once you have an expression, it does not necessarily, it doesn't really matter what the value of X is. You can just plug it in. You can just plug it in. And once you plug it in, don't be afraid to use your calculator unless the question doesn't say, unless the question says don't use calculator. But if the question doesn't say uh, don't use calculator, just even if you don't remember, use your calculator and punch in the number very quickly so that you won't waste your time. Okay. So, so in this very expression, in this very expression, when x when x is equal to negative five y will be equal to negative 10. that's what this thing means and that's what they are trying to explain in this very video so now let me go back to this video i'll play it quickly You see, the input value is the uh, the values of x, and the output value is the value of y. When you put in something, you are getting a return. Okay, so it's going to go to the next. Now you can see you can see their own function. You can see their own function. 
negative four x negative four over three x plus five. So it says relating linear functions and linear equations. So consider the uh, function negative four over three x plus five. So they are saying what would be the value of x that will make the function of f of x equal to the function of um, g of x. So now let's listen to this video uh, briefly. Negative four thirds x plus five and g of x is equal to negative one. What you see is a graph of these two functions and notice that the graph of g of x is a horizontal line because this is a constant function. Now the inputs of the functions f and g are represented by x and the outputs of the function that are represented by f of x and g of x are shown. Now, notice, if you will, that the input values occur along the x-axis, the output values occur along the y-axis. And what we're looking for is the approximate input value for which f of x is equal to g of x. Now, let's write that down. All right, so we want f of x is equal to g of x. We're looking for the input value when the two functions are equal. We're looking for an x value where we have the exact same output. So what we're looking for is a shared input value. Let's examine the graph. Where do these two functions meet? These two functions are equal when the input value is near about 4.5. Okay. The input or x value. Well, algebraically, we we'll use the properties of equality. The first step is to rewrite the two linear functions as one linear equation. The second step is to use properties of equality to isolate and solve for the particular input value. And lastly, let's check the solution using substitution. So here are our two functions, and we'll go to the very first step. We want to solve for the value of x for which f of x is equal to g of x. We want that shared input value, which will in turn give the same output for each function. Step one, we want to write the two linear functions as one linear equation. Okay, so we will write negative four-thirds x plus five is equal to negative one. We have set the functions equal to each other. We've created a linear equation. Now let's use the properties of equality to solve for the particular input value. So I will subtract the five from both sides of the equation. And this will give me a negative four thirds X on the left is equal to negative six. Using the properties of equality, the multiplication property of equality, multiply both sides by negative three quarters. And so we will multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative four thirds. We have negative three quarters multiplied by negative four thirds X is equal to negative three quarters the times negative six. So we have X is equal to 18 over four and this means that x is equal to 4.5. Okay, now, so let me explain it in a different way. Let me explain it in a different way. So he had, he had um, negative, he had negative four over three x. Um, was it, was it plus five or let's see. He had negative four over three x equal to negative six, very good. Okay, equal to negative six. This is what he had. And he was trying to solve for X. So another way you can do it, another way you can do exactly what he just did is called, you do what is called cross multiply, cross multiply. So this is a negative four over three X and this is six over one. So cross multiply means multiply this by this, multiply one by negative four X. So, and you are going to get negative four X times, times one, and that's equal to multiply three by negative six. And that was, that's going to give you negative um, six multiplied by three. Okay, that's another way of doing it. So one multiplied by any number is the same number. So you have four X negative, and then negative six times three is going to give you negative 18, negative 18. All right. And uh, you have negative on both sides. So you can divide both sides by 
negative four. So you divide negative four over negative four, x equal to negative 18 over negative four. So, and you cross out negative four divided by negative four is one. Negative divided by negative is also one. 18 divided by four will give you uh, two point, uh, your remainder two, 2.5. So your X is equal to 2.5. So what this thing means is, if you plug in 2.5 into the original equation that they had, into the original equation, the original equation was, negative four X over three plus five. So the original function is, original function is negative four over three X plus five. So if you plug in this, uh, uh, if, if you plug in, what is it called? X equal to negative, no, not negative, actually 2.5. If you plug in this thing into this equation, it should give you the value of GX. That's what this thing means. So now let's try it, let's try it. So let's try it. So let's do F of X, which is uh, F of X is equal to negative four over three X plus five. So F is negative equal to negative four over three bracket 2.5 plus five, okay? So what, what do you do? You can use calculator to figure it out. Who has a calculator? You, you can use calculator. You can use your cell phone calculator. You can use any calculator of your choice. So just type, type. Um, let me use my own cell phone calculator, all right? So uh, type uh, four multiplied by 2.5. Four multiplied by 2.5 is what? Is 10. Okay, so this gives us this gives us negative 10 over 3 plus 5. And then you simplify, you just keep simplifying. So this is another way of doing what that gentleman did. So let's get back to that screen. Well, the last thing we want to do is check the solution. Well, the check the solution, we'll go ahead and substitute 4.5. Hold on, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I'm sorry, 18 divided by four is not 2.5, it should be 4.5. 18 divided by four should be 4.5. This should be 4.5. So this number is supposed to be, this number is supposed to be 4.5. This one should be 4.5. So this is supposed to be 4.5, 4.5. Okay, so which means this one is wrong. This one is wrong. So now let's redo this. Let's redo it. Um, four multiplied by, I'm using calculator now. Four multiplied by uh, 4.5 gives us 18. So you have negative uh, 18, negative 18 divided by three plus five. So negative 18 divided by three should give us negative six plus five, which is negative one, which is negative one. So that's what this gentleman did here. Erase the screen. Erase the screen. And let's go ahead and substitute. So we substitute, we will have the function f evaluated at 4.5. Well, that's negative four thirds times 4.5, and we'll add five. What is the result here? Well, this would give us negative six plus five, which is equal to negative one. So we see f of 4.5 is negative one. When we substitute in 4.5 for the function g, we get g of 4.5 is negative one, so it's a constant function. And so now we know that when x is equal to 4.5, but this input value for both functions will get back the same output of negative one. Now use what you know to answer the following question. Now, 